to Spain, there are lots of fun things to see and do. So, vamonos! That's Spanish for go-go gadget field trip. Madrid is the center of Spain. And kilometer zero in Puerto del Sol is the center of Madrid. Everyone and everything starts here, including us. So if you get lost, we'll meet you back here. Looking down this narrow passageway, I can see the Plaza Mayor, one of Madrid's most important landmarks. This square is surrounded by hundreds of overhead balconies and was designed under the order of Felipe the second, the king who made Madrid the capital of Spain. The Palacio Real de Madrid was home to the kings and queens of Spain. Royalty from other countries have to find their own offices. I think I'm lost in all these rooms. It's easy to get confused in the Palacio Real de Madrid because it has 2,800 rooms. Wow! This is the fabulous throne room where the king and queen didn't sit. These thrones were only used as symbols of royalty, to be seen but not touched. They didn't sit on this either. This silver platter was used for the newborn royal children. When the prince and princesses were born, they were put on the platter and presented before the court. This silver goblet might have been used for serving hot chocolate, but I think you had to bring your own marshmallows. The Spaniards were the first to introduce chocolate in Europe. Europe? This is chocolate. Chocolate? This is Europe. How do we explore? Let me count the rooms. Actually, the Palacio Real de Madrid has more rooms than any other European palace. This place was so big, its halls had halls. It even had its own drugstore, the Pharmacia. The walls were lined with jars containing medicines and labeled with the cures for various ailments. Hello? Anyone in there? Oh, there aren't any soldiers in these suits. They're just replicas of knights in shining armor. And these are the guns to match the metal suits. Let this be a lesson to you would-be kings and queens. It wasn't all roses and velvet being royalty. Think about sitting on a throne that no one can sit on, wearing this stuff. Not to mention that loose chains could rattle around in your leggings for weeks. If you stroll down to the Plaza de Oriente, you can't miss these 44 statues of various kings and queens of Spain. They were designed for the top of the palace facade, but they were too heavy. I guess they were afraid the statues could fall off and hurt a real king. 
Speaking of royal statues, that's the real king, Felipe the Fourth. Not the horse, the guy on him. And how does he keep from falling over? Famous astronomer Galileo used mathematical calculations to help balance the sculpture. This is a statue of famous explorer Christopher Columbus. Columbus sailed for America under the Spanish flag in 1492 on assignment for King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. He was looking for the Far East and found the West. Sounds like what happens with some of my assignments from the Chief. With his daring voyage, Columbus was battling the unknown seas, facing the scourge of the wilds, braving storms, facing starvation and almost certain death. And loving it. This is an exact replica of one of Columbus's boats, called the Nina. The other two boats were called the Pinta and the Santa Maria, but not by each other. And now for a field trip back. Columbus was a great explorer. According to some scholars, Columbus took his first ocean voyage when he was only 10 years old. Wow! When in sunny Spain, do as the sunny Spaniards do. Get a nice wide brim shade hat. And the best place for that since 1894 is Casa Eustace, or House of Eustace. They have the famous Spanish sombreros, gorros, which are caps, and boyans, which are like French berets. Wowzers. They also have matador hats, safari hats, and funny-looking ladies' hats. But I'm the only one with a bionic hat. These hats are all fun, but unfortunately, none of them have all the mechanical features that the old inspector already has in his hat. Like these two hands that can help me read my Spanish guidebook. According to my gadget dictionary and travel guide, Proximo means next, and our Proximo stop is the Puck Toy Store, one of the oldest toy stores in Madrid. It's dedicated to selling handcrafted wooden toys. After an invigorating trot on a hobby horse, the old inspector is ready to feast his eyes on the Prado Museum, which houses one of the oldest and finest art collections in the world. There are about 1,500 paintings on permanent display here, including great works of art by famous Spanish painters such as Goya, Velasquez, and El Greco. Art is everywhere. It even spills out into the streets. Fountains, fountains everywhere. In Spain, people and birds flock to the fountains. Some even bathe there. The birds, that is. I told you there's art everywhere you look. Take these sculptures at the Parque del Retiro, but don't take them far. They're heavy. The grounds of this park were originally for royalty only, but now royalty shares it with everyone. Parque del Retiro covers around 130 hectares. One hectare is about 2.5 acres. The park is so big it has over 15,000 trees. I love to dance, and so do most Spaniards. One of their traditional dances is called Sardana. All this dancing leads us to another fine Spanish custom, the siesta. It's very much like a nap, only the whole town nods off at once. What's this wonderful music and where is it coming from? Let's investigate. The music and dance called the flamenco comes from a mixture of cultures. It started seven centuries ago. 
and boy, are their feet sore. Flamenco is one of the most recognized symbols of Spain. Here at Cafe de Chinitas, six nights a week, Spaniards can be found donning swirling skirts, wearing staggeringly high heel boots and shoes, stomping and twirling at breakneck speed, and loving it. Wowzers! Do these people know how to party or what? Obviously, the siesta works. I think a little sleep at night wouldn't hurt anyone either. Well, I hope you had fun eyeing the art of Spain, shuffling your shoes as we learn to dance the sardana and the flamenco, hanging it up with hats at Casa Eustace, and peeping at the royal palace. Go, go, gadget!